Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin and today I'm going to talk to you about Omnipod insulin pumps. Now, we have made an extensive comparison between Tandem, Control IQ and Medtronic 670G. I had some questions about um, Omnipod, of course. Some people are on Omnipod and they want to know more about Omnipod and how do Omnipod compares to the other ones. So stay tuned and we are going to dive in now. Hi, I am Dr. Ahmed Ergin and I am a diabetes uh, doctor uh, or endocrinologist, uh, however you call it. Uh, we see a lot of diabetic patients and that's actually my passion. Uh, Sugar MDs uh, is the company that I have built to be able to see patients with diabetes remotely so that they don't have to travel to an endocrinologist that may take a half a day or a day uh, to be able to have a short visit. Uh, and then uh, after that, you generally don't have uh, uh, contact with the doctor. So with the Sugar MDs, we provide concierge service where you guys can always reach out to us and then we can take care of everything remotely. So you're happy and you don't have to carry the burden of diabetes at all. So. Let's go over, uh, as an insulin user, if you're a type 1 diabetic especially, uh, you may want to know which pump you want to go on. And most of the time when I ask my patients, they really have very little to no idea. Uh, so as a result, you know, I decided to make these videos. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the Omnipod. I'm going to show you what it is. It is basically a cordless pump, right? So it looks like this. This is the size of it, and it goes directly to your skin. So you just have to uh, peel it out and then there's um, this cap that you take that off and then uh, you just take this uh, part out and then it goes to your skin and then you push a button on your PDM which is this. This is the dash so there is still a lot of patients using the old system which is uh, annoying as hell uh, but this is a little bit better. Uh, it looks like a cell phone. Uh, like a Samsung cell phone. I'm an iPhone person. That's not a, a big appealing uh, thing for me because pushing the buttons, you sometimes really have to hit the phone and I don't like that feature. Uh, it's not very responsive to fingers like an iPhone. Uh, but anyways, um, so this is an improvement uh, at least that they have made. Uh, one thing a lot of patients complain about uh, the Omnipod, of course they love it, they love it for a reason because you don't, you don't have to have cords, so it doesn't have to, um, you know, hang around and uh, you can get tangled or whatever with the other uh, pumps, but uh, if you are very active, if you are into sports and uh, if, if you, you know, teenagers especially or younger people tend to like this uh, for that reason. That's pretty much the only reason why people like uh, the Omnipod because it is nice and small. Um, it stays on your body. You don't have to take, keep take on and off. Every three days though, you have to change the pod. Uh, pod. Pod failures can happen. Technical difficulties can happen with pretty much anything, but it tends to happen with more like a high tech stuff like this. Um, again, um, one of the features that I don't necessarily like is that you have to carry this. This is like an extra cell phone that you have to carry with you all the time. And if you forget this at home, you're pretty much uh, screwed. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't want to use bad words, but you are. Uh, basically, if you don't have this, you cannot give a bolus to yourself. Now, your pod will continue to give you the basal insulin, uh, which is the continuous slow insulin that is running to you. But when you eat, you have to give a bolus, right? So you cannot really do anything about it unless you have a spare, uh, maybe an insulin pen or something like that. Um, but it's, it's hard to keep them spare because insulin pens only last a month uh, outside in the room temperature. So you cannot really just uh, put pens everywhere and then just grab where, whatever. It, it just doesn't work that way. So that is the limitation where you just have to keep that all the time. Um, so uh, the other thing is that uh, that uh, the the um, the pod takes up to 180 units of insulin. And that is kind of a limitation if you're on a lot of insulin as well. Uh, some people use only 20 units a day. Some people use 200 units a day. So if you're one of those high insulin users, that part, it will be difficult. Unless you use uh, concentrated insulin, which is uh, Humulin RU500, uh, but that is not really FDA approved. Uh, we doctors, we do it whatever we want. If you think that it's good for the patient, FDA is very stringent. They need studies, this and that. And 
uh, but we can do off-label things. So sometimes if you're on more than 200 units of insulin, we just use Hemoglobin RD500. Uh, a lot of doctors do that, and there's no harm associated with it that I'm not, as, as, far, as far as I can tell. Um, so, so that is uh, another thing. So one more thing that you have to be really aware of, if you're into this closed loop systems, uh, you're not gonna be able to uh, have the closed loop system where your pump automatically stops the insulin delivery when you're low or before you go low. Uh, like we discussed in our previous video. Uh, also, like uh, like in Tandem, for example, in Control IQ, where your pump actually can give you even more insulin if you uh, didn't get enough insulin to begin with and your sugars are rising. Uh, with the Dexcom G6 integration, you basically be able to, your pump will be able to uh, connect with Dexcom and uh, predict what's going to happen and, and adjust your insulin accordingly, which a lot of people love it. And my experience with my Tandem Control IQ has been great. A lot of people really love it just because Dexcom G6 is a great uh, tool in order to stay on top of your blood sugars, but uh, having the pump help you to manage your blood sugars automatically is uh, the best thing. And now, unfortunately, they are working on it. They have been working on it forever, as far as I can tell. Um, uh, nothing against Omnipod, but it's taken forever, uh, seriously. Uh, they still don't have the integration with Dexcom. I don't know why it is taken so long. Uh, but as far as uh, current situation, you're not gonna be able to have any integration with Dexcom. But some people, just because they don't wanna have tubing around them, they're too active, they, ha they still wear the Dexcom, uh, but uh, they also have the Omnipod, although they don't talk to each other. Um, one of the good things about this insertion is very easy. Uh, you, just, uh, you just put the patch on and then push the button and the, um, uh, and the needle will go in and out. So the, the, uh, the cannula insertion is super easy. It's faster than other pumps. Uh, for example, the tandem takes a little bit longer to get everything ready. There are more parts to it. Uh, but another common problem with the Omnipod is a lot of people have sensitive skin. Um, even people who use Dexcom, who do not get sensitive skin with Dexcom G6, they still get sensitive skin with this adhesive that they're using. Uh, there are ways around it. Sometimes we apply a little bit of a very tiny amount of steroids to avoid uh, the, um, the itchy skin or um, a red skin, uh, stuff like that. But, you know, that's an extra step, of course, if you need to apply steroids. And, and then, you know, applying steroids to your skin all the time is not always the best thing. Uh, but if you are very careful, putting very little amount, uh, that may also work out. All right. So... I hope uh, that that helps you overall, but pump is a pump. You know, the, the features are pretty much uh, typically the same, the basal and bolus features. Uh, one good thing about uh, this one, before I forget, actually, is that uh, you can actually uh, reach to Calorie King if you have this PDM, um, and that really helps to... Um, to uh, decide on how much carbs you're eating. Not a lot of people are great uh, with the carb counting. Uh, some savvy type one diabetics are really good, but uh, a lot of type one diabetics and a lot of type two diabetics also uh, have uh, uh, not a great understanding of carb counting and it's hard to carb counting always. It's hard to know, especially when you're outside. Also remember, right now the PDM coverage with this new one, uh, the da DASH system, uh, is not there yet as much as the old system. So they're working on it. They are encouraging you to bug your insurance to get the coverage, uh, but there's a long wait line uh, and um, also the coverage is not there as of yet. So this is today is May 2nd. Um, so it's 2020, May 2nd. So as of right now, the coverage is limited. So you better check with your insurance if you are planning to go on this. The older system is kind of a bulkier PDM and it is harder to use, pushing the buttons is hard, like you have to really have strong fingers. If you're older and you're, you're frail, that may be a little hard to do as well. So, again, if you liked the video, remember to give a thumbs up, and remember at SugarMDs, we can remotely manage and take care of everything for you, so you don't have to really move or go to anywhere, uh, and we can take care of your supplies, your orders, and we are very service oriented. So our goal is to make patients with diabetes life easier. So join us uh, at SugarMDs. 
we serve Florida only and soon we are serving New York and New Jersey as well. So let us know if you want to be part of us and please make sure you subscribe. Have a great day.